Churches are liberal because they have liberal Bibles. All around us today, churches are going worldly. Now, I'm not the smartest man in the world. I would certainly stand at the feet of people who are men who spent their, their lives studying the original languages and people know a whole lot more than I know. But I am a Christian. I do know something about the Word of God. I have studied the Word of God. I try to walk like Jesus wants me to walk and I try to preach what Jesus wants me to preach and I do have spiritual eyes. And I see churches going away from God toward the world. And most of those churches, I won't say all of them, I don't know, I see some King James churches going away from God toward the world. That's a shame. But most churches I see that's going away from God toward the world are churches that have picked up modern versions and they're using those modern versions. You check it out. Well, there's people that believe the King James Bible. I wish they didn't. Well, I don't know. I wish they'd get right with God, okay? But there's, there's people who are so dogmatic and they're so harsh. They're not using love to preach. And folks, we need to use love. You run into some of those, and, and they, give, they give folks a bad name. I, you know, I, I, every Christian, every person who's a child of God, every born-again Christian is my brother. Or my, uh, every born-again Christian woman is my sister. We're in Christ's church. We're a part of the body of Christ. I may differ with them. I may differ with them strongly. But if they're truly saved, I need to love them. We don't try to love everybody. Well, especially the household of faith, Okay? And so we have, and what I'm preaching now, I'm not trying to be harsh on people. I'm just pointing out some things that even if you're not a scholar, you can see surely to goodness people can stand and say, you know, the church is, is not as strong as it was in America. The church is not as strong as it was 50 years ago when almost every church used the King James Bible. That ought to give people a clue. The last thing. The King James Bible does not have a liberal agenda. And let me go back again to 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, knowing this first, that, the, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. People have to decide between two Bibles today. People have to decide if the King James Bible is the Word of God. Do modern versions represent the Word of God? Now trace it down, and I think you can find this if you'll read a little bit. The, uh, the text of modern versions starts with the original manuscripts. It passes through a man called Origen who was very liberal, through Constantine who promoted it, through Westcott and Hart who put all this together and made a neutral text out of it, and to over a hundred, over a hundred, I don't know how many there are, but over a hundred modern versions that not only disagree with the King James Bible, but disagree with each other. The received text goes back to the original Eastern text, the Syrian text. It goes like the Church of Antioch. It goes to... Uh, a man called Erasmus who, he wasn't really as strong a conservative as I wanted to see. But from there you go to Luther, you go to William Tyndale, you go to the King James Bible, and you go to the Bible that God has blessed for three, over 300 years. A Bible that God has blessed more than he ever, that more than he's blessed any other, at least any other English version. It's the Bible of great revivals. So it's the Bible Spurgeon used. It's the Bible Billy Sunday used. It's the text that Martin Luther used. Great missionaries. Great preachers. Great churches. That, that ought to tell us something. Amen? I kind of judge people by their friends a little bit. I see a guy out here and he's running around with the wrong kind of friends. I'm a little leery of him. 
And especially if I see him running around with the wrong kinds of friends all the time. But if I see a guy out here that's, run, that's running around with, he, he's got a good group of folks, and once in a while he goes over to these other people and tries to win the Lord, but he stays with his church, and he stays, he stays with, with pretty good folks, I, I, I tend to trust that man. The Lord's promised his people. He will keep his word. The Bible tells us God will keep his word. In Psalm 119, verse 89, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. You know, the Lord said, I inspired it. I will keep it. It's not up to me and you. It's not up to the scholars. The scholars, some of the scholars, some of the liberal scholars would, would have you to think, you can't really understand all this if you haven't really studied all this. Oh, I can understand this. God promised me he'd keep it. Churches have to do five things to be a true church. Glorify Jesus Christ. You know, when you go to a church, if you're not here and you go to another church, ask yourself this question first of all. Young people, listen to me. When you go and you're grown up, you get out away from your family and you've got to pick out a church and you go into a church, you ask yourself first of all this one question. When you go in there, does this church glorify Jesus Christ? If it doesn't, go somewhere else. Ask yourself, does this church believe the Bible is the word of God? Can, does the preacher stand up there and preach, thus saith the Lord? Does the preacher give the plan of salvation and, and cause people uh, to get saved? Is this, church, is this church preaching the Bible? 